Hey guys, I'm Matt. Um, I'm going to be walking you through my side quest and location for Avant Garde. Um, now, unfortunately, I didn't get nearly as far with this as I was hoping to. It's really just a space. Um, I have it available from the start. Um, if you've read through the documentation, um, you'll know that it's the, the basic idea is an art gallery. Um, in the middle of Cambridge, um, and uh, yeah, like I said, I've, I've at this stage I've really only gotten through basic spatial layout. Um, there's a bunch of mistakes as I was, you know, getting used to the creation kit. Um, but yeah, we've got um, the proprietor Jared Saint Bell and his two assistants, Hideous, uh, Ghoul, and Grim, a super mutant that's been domesticated effectively. Jared treats him like a, an attack dog. Um, so I, I went ahead and just stuck it on this, this group of buildings. Um, I was going to put together a sign on the top probably from planks and found materials, the kind of stuff you'd see at a kitschy downtown art gallery. Um, called it the Bell Jar, not just as a play on Jared's name, but I wanted to set him up as a... I was going to put a ton of like clever Sylvia Plath references. Um, so up here we have a terrible facsimile of what Hideous should look like. Now I, I had a couple hours to try and get dialogue working and it didn't seem to take, so nobody talks at this point, that's why none of the background, you know, stages and objectives and all that stuff is working right now. Um, we've got Grim. He doesn't do anything either. And over here we've got Jared. Um, as far as the space, you can see it's, it's, it's a real basic, small downtown bar kind of thing. Um, I was treating this, again, if you've read the documentation, this is supposed to be set up kind of like a gift shop. Um, kitschy, pretentious artist gift shop. Um, let's see, they've, they've busted down this wall to get into the next uh, much larger building. Uh, we'll head over here first. We've got Grimm's room. It's the old men's room. And then they have this hole that Grimm cannot fit through, but Hideous can and their heads are next to each other when they sleep. Um, she's got her little cupboards and whatnot. Um, she's kind of like Jared's apprentice. And then we can go upstairs to Jared's office. Um, that will be locked. And he's got some ongoing projects right now. Some of this stuff's kind of awkward, but you know, I was going through the, the creation kit, just kind of grabbing grabbing stuff for reference. I was going to come back and fix it later. Uh, Sylvia Plath had a have thing for the beach, the ocean, that kind of thing. So this is the beginnings of some of those references. Uh, I was going to fill this terminal with a bunch of neat journal entries. Um, let's see. So the way this should work is there would be a bunch of fun banter you'd have with these characters. Um, and then... Um, if you've played through the twine, you, you might have gotten some of this. You would, uh, you know, pay Jared and get access to exotics. But for now, it's open. I'm going to grab this key from him because we're going to need him a little bit. So the idea here is art gallery museum. Um, I didn't have time to fill much of this out. It wasn't super important. So I just wanted to get the idea across. So we've got a little bit of creepy guy here, a little bit of creepy guy here. Um, this building is, this room is way too big, but I was kind of just, you know, grabbing pieces. Um, made some mistakes with, you know, grid sizes and whatnot. So this is a little bit too freeform. This is something thrown together from just the stuff I could find really quickly um, to get the idea of what kind of art gallery space this is. So if you creep around, um, 
And this isn't the desired method for doing this. You can hack this terminal that I'm about to grab or use Jared's key. Um, what I wanted you to do is, um, you know, try to leave, and as you leave, um, if you played through the twine, you'll, you will have seen some of this. Um, Jared sends you on a fetch quest, and you come back, and, um, you know, the thing you, you got him is broken, and he's like, this doesn't, this doesn't satisfy me. You get no reward. Um, but he lets you back in here. Then he's distracted, then you can get at the button behind the counter to, uh, open exotics, but... Terminal's got this locked. Sorry, exotics. This door would be labeled exotics. Um, maybe some curtains or something to let you know in a more subtle fashion than that red light that you're not really supposed to be there. So we've got the key, so we don't have to hack this. Let's get a little message for Hideous. Right. And let's head over here. Again, we can shortcut all of that other stuff by sneaking around and grabbing the key or hacking that console. Now, I don't have it in here, but when you get to the bottom of the stairs, that door behind us just locked. So this is the this is Jared's real business, and I'm not trying to go super shady here. I think he, you know, it's not good side, bad side. Um, I like to think of Jared as kind of an absurdist um, with looser mores than, um, you know, a typical good guy, bad guy that you would set up in a game. Um, but we've got these little performance rooms, evaluation rooms. I planned to have, uh, I had planned to have some people you could talk to in some of these. But the general idea is people of means can watch things happen behind this glass. Here we've got some theater seating and a jukebox. And here we have this L couch. I was going to try and set this up to shock somebody in a chair kind of thing. Was it Stanford prison experiment? or No, no, it wasn't the prison experiment. It was... You know, the shocking, shocking people. So we try to leave after talking to that guy, you know, and that door's locked. So the only thing we can do is this, which I wanted this to be a little absurd and insulting and obvious, because I don't want the player feeling threatened by any of this. And as they stand here, trigger, that door's attached. Um, I haven't quite gotten the hang of you guys' movables, statics, and whatnot. Uh, but we'd be locked in here. Now, desired gameplay is that the player, if they've got the charisma for it and make the right uh, dialogue choices, they try to stay in the cage as long as possible. Players that aren't into what's happening can uh, get out of this as they could have several um, at several stages earlier. But you try to stay in there long enough to, uh, you know, for all the hijinks to ensue and um, hideous and grim and uh, Saint Bell to make you outfit pieces that are combat worthless. Um, but memorable um, for me. I, I like uh, having a good souvenir more so than, than loot, given how level um, the playing field generally is in regards to the enemies and the gear and all of that stuff. So I want a good story and a good souvenir. That's what I was trying to go for here. Um, similar to the Silver Shroud, but on maybe a smaller scale. Um, so we can fight our way out. Um, or if we manage to stay in the cage long enough, they just let us out. Um, we've seen, we will have seen Grim and Hideous coming in and out um, through this little door. Um, I was maybe a little over reliant on the the bookcases. Those are pretty neat. Um, so this is another building. This is kind of the back route um, into Jared's office. So whether we were fighting him or you know on good terms. He's in here and uh, makes us an offer. If we take, we can we can fight him because we're angry or we don't like what he's doing, or we can agree to um, send him people that we don't like from our settlements. And uh, if we do that, we can continue talking to Jared and Hideous and Grim and maybe do more 
more interesting things with them. Um, if you have the time um, and you're interested, I recommend playing through the, the Twine text adventure real quick. It's, it's relatively painless. Um, you can kind of get an idea for what I was going for here. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. And that is avant-garde.